welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Steph, and I make videos all about film, acting, and the entertainment industry. Today we are actually continuing our series on how to make your own movie with no crew, just you. And it is all about world building and creating the environment. Ready? Let's do this. What is world building? To put it simply, world building is the art of creating a fictional world. Think the fantastical worlds of Harry Potter, the Chronicles of Narnia, or even the Hunger Games. While the term world building is most known for being associated with the sci-fi or fantasy genres, it's definitely not limited to those genres. You could use world building for a wide variety of genres. Honestly, it's really just about expanding the details of your story and coming up with an interesting environment that helps helps move your story forward. And that's really what it comes down to is consistently moving your story forward. That's the most important thing. So why do we do it in film? World building truly helps your audiences immerse themselves in your story. It really allows people to let themselves go and dive into your movie head first and feel like the world that you've built is real. If you don't do that world building work in the development stage, then there's not really a solid foundation for your story to lean on and it kind of just exists. Now, if your story is something that 100% could very easily exist in our real world, world building is not as important of a concept. It's not as necessary, which is why, like I said, it's more popular in the fantasy and sci-fi genres. But you still wanna do some elements of world building no matter what your genre. So, how do I do it? I'll let you know my strategies and my steps that I take to creating my worlds, but just be aware that everyone has a different writing style and everyone has a different process. So while the main components of my world building strategies might align with other people's, just know that everyone will create their own personal style, and so take what I'm telling you today and use that to inform your own process and figure out your own personal style. So the first thing that you want to consider is that world building should not be your first step. Your first step should honestly be coming up with your idea. It should be figuring out what direction you want your story to go in. So whether your story is plot or character driven, it does need to be one or the other. It needs to be driven by something other than just the environment. So that's the thing that we want to avoid here is we don't want to come up with a world or an environment and then place characters or place plot points into it because it's going to feel sort of like an empty shell. The audience needs to be motivated by more than just the environment. So you really need Need to come up with a good idea and a good premise for whatever story you want to tell. So really focus on that right off the bat and then you can sort of expand and build your world around those things. You want to come up with either an idea, a plot, a story, or you want to come up with a really compelling character. A character that has a want or a need or a drive that again pushes the story forward. So when you think about it, an environment isn't necessarily going to push your story forward like a plot point or a character can. The world that you're building should should complement and enhance your story, not be the sole focus of your story. You want to think about what is your film about if you take the world away? So if you completely remove the setting, what are you left with? And if you're not left with anything, that's a problem. You want to have some good foundation and some good base to your story before you can start expanding on this fantastical world around it. Once you have your idea down and once you have that like main plot figured out, the next thing you really want to focus on is building strong characters. So what I like to do is I actually build character profiles. So once I figure out who the main players are for my next film or my next story, I'll create an entire profile for each of my characters. So say I have my main protagonist, I'm going to list out things like their likes, their dislikes, their favorite color. I'm going to talk about backstory, their parents, where they came from, how they were raised. I'm literally going to think of anything I can think of about that character that might come up later in my writing and might help me figure things out because that's the big thing. You don't want to figure out your world building as you go. You want to do all of this hard work before you really start the main bulk of your writing so that you create this encyclopedia of information that you can draw from and pull from in your writing process later on. If you're figuring things out as you go, it's going to come off as sloppy and it's not going to be this tight, concise story story that makes sense and flows, the pacing will be off, different things are just going to be off and the audience might not even realize specifically what's off. They're just going to know that it's not what they're used to seeing. Sometimes in addition to character profiles, I'll go as far as to look up 
different actors that I think would play the role. So I, I literally use my imagination a little here and pretend that I'm filming this big Hollywood movie that's produced by some studio where I have these named actors at my disposal and I'll kind of think in my brain, who do I think would play that role? And I come up with one, two, sometimes even three different actors, whether it's an animation, a graphic, or a picture of an actual real person, all of these different images can help to inform your character and build that character and give you a visualization of that character before you ever move into the casting process. So one little thing here is you don't want to get your heart set on an actor in the way of, say you create your character and you have Chris Hemsworth in mind for the role, but you don't have any other actors in mind for the role. You don't have any other imagery in mind for the role. You're only using Chris Hemsworth. That's where things could get a little bit murky because you'll never really be able to then envision your actual actor in the role because you've put Chris Hemsworth in as your placeholder. So just keep that in mind that you can use these actors and you can use the different imagery to sort of help, you know, inform your vision, but don't get so wrapped up in that vision that you don't have flexibility and that you aren't able to see other actors playing that role aside from this big Hollywood name that you've imagined, you know? All right, so once we have our idea and our characters sort of fleshed out, figured out, and we kind of know what direction we're moving in, we can finally focus on the actual world building in world building. So here's where we get to the fun parts. We really get to use our imagination here and it's a really freeing experience to just be able to purely create what Ever you want. It's completely up to you. There are no limits when it comes to building these worlds. So one of the main things that you want to focus on when you're coming up with these points and these details is, does it move the story forward? Does it progress the story? So does it progress the story, but also how does it affect your protagonist? How does it affect your characters? Does it matter to your characters? That's really, really huge here. If there's a detail about your world, it might be something that you know because you know everything about your world, but it doesn't mean the audience needs to know. So just for numbers, sake, let's say that we've come up with a solid 100 details about our film. We've come up with these 100 things, whether it's about the environment, the setting, the clothes, the rules of the society, the magic of the society, whatever different type of elements that you've come up with for your world. Let's say we've got a hundred different elements, but only 25 of those elements actually move your story forward and have anything to do with your character. The rest of the elements are just part of the story, part of the world, right? They don't necessarily move your story forward. So when it comes down to it, you need to cut those 75 other elements out. You can potentially add little things in here and there after your main story is told, but when it comes down to it, you don't want to be bogged down by the environment. You don't want to make your story focused on your world. You want it to be focused on the plot or on the characters and have the world complement that. So just keep that in mind and kill your darlings and don't hold on to these elements and these parts of the world that maybe are fun little Easter eggs for you to know. But honestly, does your audience need to know that? Does your audience need to know this piece of information to understand the the rest of your movie and to understand how things are going. Then if the answer is no, then you need to cut it. You just need to be honest with yourself and make those tough decisions and really tighten up your script. So if you really focus on how the world affects your character and how the world interacts with your character, that's how you'll win. That is how you will world build effectively. So my next piece of advice is to just keep things small. Keep it simple. Don't go crazy elaborate on your very first project. Don't come up with a Harry Potter level world for your very first movie, especially if it's a movie that you're making by yourself. That's, again, what we're doing here, right, is we're completely doing this on our own. So in order to do that, we have to make it manageable for ourselves. So really pare that down. And if you are going to include certain details, make sure that they're details that you can either pull off or that you don't necessarily need to physically show. There's different ways that you can come up with world building where it's not necessarily shown on screen, but you don't want to get caught in the trap of telling over showing. That's a big thing here is we don't want to just dump a ton ton of exposition on our audience, especially if we are telling as opposed to showing. Audiences are going to have trouble keeping up with information that you're constantly throwing at them, especially if there's not an interesting visual element added to it. So if you're just dumping this information, you're just dumping this exposition, people are going to get bored. They're going to turn to their phones or they're going to turn off your movie completely. And people's attention spans are so short nowadays between TikTok and Reels and all this short form content. You really have to be careful and make sure that you're keeping your audience's attention. If you go on 
for too long and it's not something that's interesting or it's not something that's visually interesting, you could lose your audience in the first few seconds and not even realize it. So keep that in mind and make sure that you're not going too big right off the bat. Keep it small and just give them the little nuggets of information that they do need because that's the kind of stuff that's really gonna put your film over the edge. Is if you keep it really subtle and just affect people based off of the story and the characters and like I said, let the world complement your main story. And that's really how people are going to appreciate your world is if it's not shoved down their throats but it's just this beautiful accent that's in the background that really does just cater to your story and enhance it overall. And then my last point for today is another binder. If you know me, you know that I love a good binder. You know I love my organization and I love to categorize everything and organize it properly. And this is just something that I really like to do with my movies. So for each stage of the filmmaking process, so development, pre-production, production and post, I like to create a different binder that has different elements and different information that I need for my filmmaking process. So for your development binder, it's a perfect place to world build. And you can have all of your character profiles, you can have all of your information about the world and then take it with you on set while you're filming and while you're working on your production design. If you need to reference anything, flip open your binder. It's also gonna help you in continuity. It's gonna help you with keeping things consistent throughout your film. And that's super, super important. If audiences are watching something that's inconsistent and doesn't have good continuity, it takes them out of it. It's gonna take them out of the world that you've just worked so hard to create. That if you are creating a world that has all of these different details and that really is unique and different from our world, you need to keep it straight. And an easy way to do that is to compile all of that information into a binder or at least a notebook. Write it down somewhere and have it on hand for reference. So right now the film that I'm working on for the Make Your Own Movie Challenge is something that only involves one or two characters max and definitely only one actor. So even though it might be two characters, I'm only going to be utilizing one actor. So stay tuned in this process to find out how I'll be pulling that off. But at least for right now, I've just started with my world building and I'm not doing a crazy, crazy story that requires a ton of world building, but I have done that in the past. So for my movie Bound, it was a fantasy film and I did, I created an entire new world. I went over it a little bit in a previous video, but if you haven't seen that, I can tell you now that I was inspired by Game of Thrones, by the opening credit scene with that map and the interactive map and I ended up creating my own map and from there it sort of just snowballed and spiraled and it became this idea that was bigger and bigger and bigger. So with Bound, while I did sort of come up with the concept of a fantastical world first, it didn't really start to take off until I came up with a specific character. So the character Beetle, if you've seen the movie, if you haven't, it doesn't matter, but I just, I don't know, I couldn't get this name out of my head and between the name and the map put together, it really did just explode into this huge story with this huge, huge world that I had built. So if you have any questions about world building that I maybe didn't get to answer, go ahead and drop those in the comments down below. Maybe we can answer each other's questions down there. And make sure you stay tuned because as we move forward, I will be making more videos like this that break down the entire process of making your own movie with no crew, just you. I'm sure I could go on all day about different strategies for world building and creating the environment, but I hope I was at least able to provide a little taste and a way to get you started and a way to get you into it and understand that it's not such a daunting task when you break it down. As long as you stay organized and you keep all of your facts straight and all of the things that you come up with straight and you don't lose yourself in those details, then I think you'll succeed. I think that you have all the tools in front of you to properly build your world and create your environment for your next story. So good luck. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you learned a little bit about world building and creating the environment. And in the last video, I challenged you to make your own movie by yourself alongside me. And I've actually been using some of the strategies that we discussed today to work on my own script. So comment down below if you are doing the same. For the rest of the month of August, we are still supporting the different charities that are helping out with the crisis in Afghanistan. So if you're interested in finding out some more information all about how you can help, go ahead and check the description bar down below. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel for more film, acting, and entertainment related videos moving forward. Plus this new series all about making your own movie on your own with just you, no crew. I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Okay, this clip is how do I do it?